Hey there again, folks. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Never 7, The End of Infinity. And, uh, by the way, I just noticed, but, uh, uh, no, okay, don't tell it. But the, uh, I just noticed that the, na that the uh, name of this chapter is The Wrinkled Me. I don't know, I just found that a little funny. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we are, uh, still going towards, uh, Krimi's ending. Uh, maybe we could have done the ending first for once. It ain't gonna happen. I'm pretty sure I screwed up enough <laughs> before the first loop, before before the first loop ended, to where I probably ain't gonna get a good ending. Uh, but yeah, we uh, stuff has changed apparently. Uh, you know, she didn't talk about the whole uh, dream, her dream for the future. And all that sort of thing, so... She's making different origamis. So maybe it's just a random chance of what she built there, so... Built? I guess he wouldn't consider origamis built. I like how I'm making them plural. Origamis! It's a thing. <laughs> but yeah, and uh... That's right, we also found out that she probably time-traveled. Not a clone. Probably. But anyway, let's go. This wrinkled, smiling face. Or an origami that Krimi folded herself. But does it really resemble me? Although I think this. Thank you. I muttered these words and carefully placed me in my pocket. A warm smile rises on Krimi's face as she looks at me. After that, Krimi and I continue to fold origami for an hour. Before I know it, I realize that Krimi's childlike innocence is rubbing off on me. <clears throat> we use up all the origami, the black papers, the silver papers, and the gold papers. Ah, there's one sheet of white origami paper left that I forgot about. I guess I lost it myself after making that origami bird that I completely forgot about it. Kirby places all the completed origami works in the empty basket like a mountain. She closes the lid and with a snap lowers the snap basket. Kirby seems happy. However, I'm a little disappointed. Krimi Unit 17. I want to see it disappear as it flew towards the sea once more. When I close my eyes, the image of the white paper airplane clearly rises to my mind. I remember as it glided across the windless sea in a straight line, flying far, far away. By remembering that scene, I'm finally able to give up on seeing it again. Krimi and I spontaneously hold hands and leave you point far. He spontaneously. I guess spontaneously holding hands is a little bit better than combustion. You're right. I know it's the episode, the, the, the video title, or chapter title. Of course, it was a lot of fun. I answered by smiling the same way I did last time. It's cold right now. However, I only feel warmth through my hand. It's Krimi. What? Kirby says this, then suddenly brings me into a thicket on the side of the road. It can't be. This is really unexpected. It wasn't really? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Last night, Kirby didn't tell me about her scar. Because she didn't tell me, I thought for sure that this event would never happen. I can't say a word. My throat is parched. I'm unable to brace myself for what's about to happen. Krimi remains silent, her mouth shut. She turns around, her back facing me. Krimi raises all the clothes off the upper half of her body to her neck. It's Krimi's small back. For the second time, I see that deeply engraved scar. Krimi. I don't take even a single step back. I stand my ground and look at that scar. It may be ugly and pitiful, but it's also a part of Krimi. The pointy zigzag lines of stars. The rough protruding bulges. That reddish violet uh, discoloration. This time I'm definitely going to take that sadness from her. Looks like Krimi is about to pull down her shirt. Before she can, I embrace her. Embrace Krimi's back tightly, tightly. I want to do this for all this time. As I'm behind her, I can't see Krimi's expression. 
But her thin shoulders are shaking over and over again. That alone is enough for me to understand Kurumi's feelings. Kurumi, ne? Honto wa minna to issho ni. I know. You don't have to say it. I know. Kurumi. And for a while longer, we stand in, in the uh, the breast of the forest as I embrace her. Breast of the forest. Kurumi's back is burning hot. That rough sensation on her back no longer seems sad. Kurumi's scar has become my own. My chest melts into that small back and they become one. Sounds like you need medical, uh, need to consult a medical physician. There's nothing between Kurumi and I. I can feel Kurumi's warm, protruding heartbeat uh, through my fingertips. The pain has disappeared from the very frail and kind echo of Kurumi's life. You can feel my feelings for her grow stronger in my heart. I want to hold her like this forever, always until the end of time. Arigato. With those words, my heart seems to burst open. I hope you're not dr playing a drinking game. Dun, dun, dun. Kurumi -chan. La, la, la. Oni -chan. Kurumi. Huh? Nani, Oni -chan? Kurumi, uh, you, lo you love things like haunted houses, right? Ohe. You hate them? Uh -huh. All right, then when we get back to the mainland, uh, let's go to an amusement park. Hey, yeah. For real. I won't. Kirby takes out a thin pinky and wraps it around mine. Yeah, got it. I nod firmly in reply. On our way back, Kurumi and I keep our pinkies wrapped around each other as uh, we walk back to Luna Beach. We meet with Izumi Sand and have dinner at Luna Beach. Kurumi excitedly tells Izumi Sand about today's event. Izumi Sand quietly listens to her talking while sm smiling gently. Such a cheerful dinner. There's not a hint of gloominess in the room. Not from Kurumi or from Izumi Sand. All of it is warm. That was fall pies. Fall pie. Hey! Foy gras. It's, that's the same language, at least. Faux pas is a mistake. Or something. What is, what is a faux pas? It's something. Kind of like an air. Probably what I'm doing? I don't know. <laughs> Duck's liver? My sense of taste is indeed quite bizarre. If <laughs> I like things like that. Hey, if you don't know what they are and you eat them, they might, you know, it might not taste too bad. I want to know what I'm eating now. Yes, this is... Yes, this is human. Human meat. Oh, I didn't mention that? Oh, oops. <laughs> this is... What movie? Oh, well, there's probably several movies like that. Where, where that's happened. Past 10, Kermie got tired of talking as she headed up to Luna Beach's second floor while rubbing her sleepy eyes. Like last time, Izumi Sand and I find ourselves all alone. I plan on going back to the lodge soon. I stay here. Well, I don't think it's as likely, but I think the same thing as the last time I was in. This, this situation might happen again. I repeatedly tell myself that I need to say goodbye to her and leave, but I keep feeling that like the timing isn't exactly right. Instead, we continue to chatter on about trivial things. This is if even Izumi Sand herself is trying to wait for some kind of timing as well. Exactly two hours have passed since Kirby went up to go to sleep. The date display on my watch has already changed up to six. Well, then it's about time to get going. I try to stand up. Makoto-kun! Izumi Sand frantically restrains me. I like it. I like the the visual that that sentence 
gives off like she like grabs him by the neck and she's like, "No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what, what is it? Why, why are you choking me?" Makoto-kun, today's story, can you tell me the story? My heart beats loudly. I have a bad feeling about this. Uh oh. A very bad feeling. He was saying I really need to get back. Makoto Oh. We we can talk about that tomorrow. You know Here's a question that I've got. And, uh, I don't know how it really works, medically speaking. But, uh, wouldn't the scar have shrunk? Or stayed the same size? I mean, if you're a baby and you're this wide, then you become this wide, I would think. I mean, the, the I don't know, how, I mean, I don't know how this stuff works, you know. I don't really have any scars. I mean, Got cuts, you know, but no scars, you know. That uh, I get cuts all the time at work, but uh, no scars. But if I mean, she was a baby, one year old. So I mean, does it does it scale up as you grow up? I mean, I don't. <laughs> I would have thought it would wouldn't have been. A thing now, you know. Is that a weird thing to ask? I, I would think that the that the skin tissue would have just actually grown around it to where it would just. I don't know. That'd be painful growing up if if the scar actually grew with you. I mean, that would be incredibly painful, you know. Oh crap! My scar grew. Grew some. I I, I grew. 10 inches uh, in the last two years and my scar's grown an inch so yeah I mean it would probably still be bad I mean it's all across her back and she's like this wide I'm assuming this is how wide a a baby would be about one year old I mean yeah that's about right should be and she's actually I'm, I'm fat so maybe my <laughs> maybe my my uh my scale is wrong. I mean, it would have. She would definitely be a lot wider than a one year old baby at 17, so. Or she should be, unless she's anorexic or something. But, uh. Hmm. I'm just wondering, you know. Is he saying? I mean, like, glanced towards the shop stairway. It's alright, Kermit still hasn't come down yet. I'm just gonna talk to you like this. Yeah, I need to buy a scar from, uh... <laughs> that's, that's what he should do. Or either he could just be like, my my good old escape tactic, yeah. Got di diarrhea, bye. <laughs> I'll lower my voice. What'd you do if Karimi heard? And scold her? Alarm, Nizumi said, also looks towards the space you sure? That's not true. Last time. I'm getting very irritated. Just tell her everything. I'm doing everything in my power to resist that impulse. ねえ、なんで断言できるの？教えてよ、マコト君。私も知りたいのよ。真実を。Oh. I rolled over the cord. Choices. Okay, you know, here's the the win all scenario. Tell her to come with me. We're going for a walk, and then tell her. That way, Kurumi can't overhear that. That's the win all scenario. Except that she might think you're a loony. Besides that, it's a win all situation.
You know what? <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is the right, right decision or not. We're going to go with this, though, because I want to see what happens. I'm just going to be like, bah. I say nothing and stand up. I feel bad for you, Jimmy San, but all I can do is ignore her and set out to leave. However, Dang you, Izumi. That's it. You know what? I'm not finishing this game. I'm not doing Izumi's route. She's cut out from this let's play now. <laughs> She's making things a lot more complicated than it needs to be. My heart stops. You're wrong. You and Izumi Sen are. Kurumi, please listen to Usatsuki! Kurumi runs out of Moon Beach. Kurumi! Without hesitating, I jump over to Handrail onto Moon Beach. That's right, I'll get there before she does. Intense pain runs through my body. The dip of the sand that twists in my ankle. I then see Kurumi as she rounds the side of the shop to come close. She runs directly in front of me, giving me the chance for me to grab her by the shoulders. Kurumi is crying. Large teardrops begin to pour out of her eyes. She keeps wiping them away with her palms, uh, but more tears just keep on coming. <laughs> You're wrong, Kurumi. Listen to me. I'm probably, dang it. Telling the truth was probably the right idea. <sighs> I firmly shake Kurumi by the shoulders. Kurumi flinches from my shouts. But just as... How should I explain this? Too. The truth is, as crazy as it is, it seems to be the probably the better option. I was just thinking here, maybe this game is t trying to teach people to not lie. <laughs> so yeah, actually, Krumi is probably a lot more prone to believe such a thing. Especially since she probably time traveled herself. Yeah, time travel. All right, listen close to Kurumi. Kurumi only continues to cry. In the corner of my field of vision, I see a dumbfounded Zumi-san standing on the terrace. You and Zumi-san are true blood-related sisters. As for how, I will explain that now. Kurumi, you were born 21 years ago, and one month later, someone kidnapped you. Seven days after the crime uh, was committed, the kidnapper died when Shikinomori Shrine was destroyed. The truth is, you were there with the kidnapper at that time. You received a scar on your back from the incident. And three years later, you were discovered in a rebuilt shrine. But your body was the same as when you had been kidnapped for some reason. You hadn't aged at all. That's why a lot of people thought there's no way that baby can be Kurumi. And as a result, it caused a misunderstanding that you and Izumi san weren't blood related. But you know what, Kurumi? That baby was definitely you. The scar on your back, that's the proof. Kurumi, you time travel three years into the future. It'd be funny if she's like. <laughs> but... <laughs> it's only natural that you didn't age. Huh? 
It's not a lie. Hmm. 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 Well, probably because you mentioned the time travel. <laughs> That's, uh... Yeah. Kurumi. Well, crap. Let me shakes off my grasp. Hmm. Maybe the zoom. Maybe I should have started tell, trying to tell Izumi the truth, and then when I told Kurumi about time travel, perhaps those that combination would have been the right thing to do. She turns around and breaks off into a run. I barely managed to grab onto the hem of her clothes. Kurumi trips and falls down on the beach. In that instant, the bell. But that's impossible. Kurumi picks up the bell and stands up. She darts across the beach. I try to pursue her, but the instant I take a step forward on the beach, pain runs through my body. It shoots up towards my brain, numbing it. I squat to stop myself from collapsing. I firmly clench my teeth to endure the pain. I can't let, let Kurumi go off now. I see Kurumi's retreating figure steadily begin to disappear. I start running. Every time I take a step forward, pain rushes through my whole body. What did he do to cause it? Himself to, uh... Did he dig around on the beach after that first day to, to try to find the bell? I can't remember. That'd be interesting if that's what he did. But I had to run. I had to follow through me. I don't want to lose her. I don't want Krumi's smile to disappear. Even though I vow never hurt Krumi again, I step forward while enduring the pain. I run and run, but Krumi's figure only gets smaller and smaller. Krumi disappears. She disappears over the banks. I lose all my strength and collapse on the beach. My head is going blank. My consciousness slowly starts to fade. Krumi. Hmm. So then cold and wet hits me on the forehead over and over again. Rain, huh? The rain helps me come to my senses. That's right, I've got to go. I have to hurry and find Kurumi. That seems obvious. As I said, my destination is obvious. Of course, I, it's the shrine. Now I'm getting paranoid now because we haven't, she hadn't went there before now, so I'm wondering if she went. Yeah, she went there on the fifth, fourth day, something like that. Yeah, that's, no, she disappeared, that's right. On the fifth day. Right? I can't remember. I don't remember these things. But, you know, he found her and she said it, it felt familiar. And, it, and even if, for argument's sake, she doesn't go, then history won't repeat itself. Yeah, actually, that's true. Hopefully. <laughs> There's no hesitation within me, unless she gets hit by that car that was supposed to hit Haruka. Anyway, if I don't hurry up and get there, I endure the pain and begin to walk towards the shrine, dragging my legs along. By the time I arrive in front of the long staircase, the drizzle has become a constant rain. Wipe off the raindrops from my soaked forehead within the back of my hand. My legs have already fallen on. I do my best to raise my heavy legs and step from the first step of the staircase. I lose my balance, but although it seems like I'm going to fall, I managed to regain my posture with one of my hands. Just like that, I slowly and carefully ascend up the long staircase. Here's a question. So, Izumi is kind of pretty suspicious. If he wanted to really save Kurumi, 
stay like. Hey, Zoomy. Yo. Over here. I broke my ankle. I sprained it or something. She's going to the shrine. Go, go stop her. If she, if she gets there, she's going to die. I time travel. I know, I know crowd. Maybe she shouldn't be time travel. In an emergency situation, you shouldn't miss time travel, I figure. But he could have done that. And he knew he could be the one to save her. It could be a happy ending. One way or the other. Happier, anyway. In the deep darkness, the shrine stands out like something faintly white against a dark background. The raindrops are counting the roof become a thin mist that envelops the shrine. Its faint and gray appearance makes it look like a mirage. The exact same scene as that day. Will it play out exactly? You're gonna have to find out next time. Because I don't know. I'm thinking it's going to think it's going to happen. The, uh, him hurting his ankle. I almost said wrist. Uh, his, his leg wrist. Uh, uh, probably slowed him down to where the same amount of time has, has passed, I figure. So, uh, I kind of figure it'll be the same. I figure, well, it's hard to say though because Haruka's whole deal felt the same until a certain point and then it's different and then you know suddenly it was the pursuit to, to find the donor you know uh, and then Saki how is that like, how is that different? yeah she still she still almost cut herself and then he stopped her so this might be different I don't know it's playing out exactly the same uh, mostly. So, anyway, hope you folks enjoyed and I shall see you in the next one. Where we're going to find out whether I get a good ending or bad ending. I, I, I put my money on bad, but I don't know. Farewell there, folks.